Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Sharara, and I'm a postdoc scientist here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I'm glad I'll get a chance to share with you some of the research uh, that we are conducting here uh, in the age, uh, anaerobic digestion systems uh, in manure uh, farm, uh, pro, uh, in livestock production in particular. Uh, I, I'll start with this news clipping here from a, a recent uh, call for proposals here in the state of Wisconsin about funding for uh, clean water renewable energy systems on farms and that proposal emphasized the um, the interest in cooperative uh, uh, systems that serve more than uh, one farm at the same time so uh, so there, there are many words or terms used to refer to that coordinated or centralized or cooperative but basically we are referring to the same concept here so one of the key uh, issues that uh, we set out to answer in this research and I will uh, show you here is how to go about to developing these systems. Uh, should we uh, pick a, a farm uh, arbitrarily and draw a, a radius around it? Or should we start by a region and try to convert everything in that region? So that's one issue, how to go about the, uh, developing or the system here. The second point is the uncertainty inherent in a system like that. There's so many parameters or variables, and with each one of them changing, the, the feasibility of the entire project changes. So to answer those two issues, we set out to develop this uh, modeling uh, study. So th there, there are uh, pros, of course, to using this uh, coordinated approach. Uh, you reduce the cost of processing per, per cow or per unit animal. You can get more participation, more reduction of greenhouse gas or more energy production, so on. But the downside is the logistics, of course, can be tricky. So uh, again, so the question we set out to answer is, what are these parameters and how they control the profitability? Uh, does centralization offer an advantage? And what are the general rules we can deduce about these systems? So uh, we, picked, we set, uh, picked out two uh, dairy production regions here in uh, Wisconsin. You can see them highlighted, uh, region A, south central Wisconsin around Madison. And the other region here is around uh, uh, on Lake Michigan. And uh, we have the data on farming on both the regions, number of cows and number of farms and so forth. In this slide here, I want to draw your attention to a few things. Uh, these dots represent the dairy herds in the two study areas we are talking about, the south central and the uh, east central. Uh, the first point is the number of farms is more or less comparable, 150, 651. But the number of cows or uh, lactating cows is not the same. There's a, a significant difference between the two. Also, the distances between these farms is not uniform. Here, the farms are more clustered, more farms clustered, less farms spread apart, but more cows and less cows. So with that in mind, uh, I present that in a different way. We look here at the herd distributions. So we see in the south central one, most of the herds are 200 to 500 cows, whereas in the other region, it's mostly larger CAFOs, 3,000 and above. We also look at the distances between farms. That's a key uh, parameter when we look at aggregating uh, manure uh, to process uh, into uh, by gas and digestate. So we see, again, the clustering. Uh, one of the regions have more cluster farms than the other. Uh, again, to reiterate what the other presenters have uh, shown, there are different ways or different flavors for adopting this system. Uh, and, and end uses for the biogas. For the current study, we focus on biogas to electricity and heat uh, using uh, uh, combined heat and power system uh, for sale to the utility and to supply heating demand. And in this model, we, uh, our assumption is all the heat generated is, is sold to offset natural gas demand. And the digestate is returned to the farms. So we set about uh, selecting the parameters that drive the, the performance of these systems, and we, we classified them uh, by type. So on the left here, you see the source. In this case, it's dairy uh, farms. Uh, our study limited to dairy farms. We didn't consider mixed feedstock streams, although this is certainly uh, legitimate, and a lot of the times that gives a, a huge advantage. But we're looking into the capacity of the systems, how, uh, how many tons per day, uh, what is the relative location and what's the quality, what's the biogas potential. Then we look at the digester itself, what are the energy needs, conversion efficiency generator, 
And then finally, you look at the economy of the economics of the system. What's the capital for the system cost share or supports uh, and the, the revenue streams? In, in this current study, we look at the heat and electricity, but there's, there are also other streams. Um, as uh, Kurt pointed out, there's greenhouse gas credits. Uh, and in this case, we are using the, the prices that are available currently uh, for uh, offset uh, tons of CO2. We also look at uh, renewable energy credits or RECs as the common term refers to them. And one of the key challenges here is uh, we can pick one value to represent each of these parameters, but in reality, they vary within a range. So to, to address this variability, we, we developed a, a, a new approach. We used our existing knowledge to develop ranges and not just one deterministic value. And then we sampled from these ranges uh, a sample uh, of 1,000 uh, samplings. And then we used mathematical optimization to uh, find the most uh, lucrative of profit profitable system. We used a discounted uh, 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 cash flow system, we profitability, or we looked at the net profit present value of the entire project after 20 years. That's the, our assumption for the project life. And finally, we instead of getting out one solution, we end up with a population of solutions. We analyze them statistically to see where are they clustering around? Are, are there certain common features that we can intuit from that? So that's a, a representation of the system. And again, all that is available in the handout, so I might move a little quicker here. Here are some of the values that we uh, sampled from. As you can see here, these are ranges for biomethane potential, for capital costs, system performance, and so forth. And some of the parameters were held constant, the discount factor, project life, and so forth. Uh, so it, it is computationally uh, expensive, but uh, with the uh, clusters of computer we have available, whether on cloud or locally here, the, the time is not as demanding, uh, less than an hour. Uh, the computation could be carried out. So the results I'll share with you now are two parts. So there's a part when we compare the two regions that I highlighted for you, and then there are within each of those regions, we look where the, the digester systems are clustered or available or profitable. So first, when we compare the two regions, you look here and you see that there, the blue part here represents where the systems are lucrative. So for the thousand times we try to find the most economic systems, majority of the time, in both cases, it was not economic within the parameter ranges we've identified to build an AD system to generate profit. So that's a little bit of a bad news. You see here uh, the difference between the two regions, certainly in the region where the farms were larger, it was more profitable. Uh, it were more frequently the case that an AD will be profitable there than in the smaller, more clustered farms. So that's another insight. Uh, within these uh, systems, we, we have other data, and that's uh, in the manuscripts that is already undergoing. But not all of these systems were cooperative, which means not all these digester systems, the 42% or the 13%, were co cooperative projects. Uh, most of the time, there were actually single digesters on one farm, serving one farm. 15% uh, uh, in this case and 10% in this case, these systems were actually cooperative, one digester serving more than one farm. Another thing we looked at is the distribution of the uh, net present value allocated to a cow, so uh, dollars per cow over the entire project life. So you have to divide that over 20 to get the dollar value per cow per year. And uh, as you can see here, uh, it's not uh, incredible, incredibly lucrative, and most of the values are clustered uh, less than five dollars uh, a cow a year. When we try to break down the cost operating and revenue, you see the labor and maintenance dominate the cost. Transportation, uh, in the case of cooperative management, is more so the case in the south central than in the eastern, and the revenue is dominated by electricity revenue. Another part here, I, I, we divide, define some ranking criteria for the digesters. Uh, which, uh, what is the probability of a digester being built on a farm? And we, uh, we rank them in a descending order from 100% and going forward. And we also looked at the ranking of the farms participating in these uh, clusters for cooperative management. 
it, it'll make sense when you look at the maps here. So b before you get uh, startled by so many details and points here, uh, I want you to look here on the left side. Here we are maximizing the profitability in the south central region here in Wisconsin. These are the farms available for digestion. And the whole circles represent the farms. The black circles represent the digesters. And the red lines represent all the farms that are aggregated to that digester, that are cooperatively participating in the digester. You see not all the digesters have the same probability, so that's the first takeaway. These digesters are located on the largest herds. That's number two. The radius for these digesters is not the largest, is uh, around one to two miles. And a majority of the time, these digesters uh, are uh, uh, single, as in a, they do not uh, bring whole manure most of the time from the other farms. So these are the most profitable systems, if profitability is the goal. Here, when we actually target the greenhouse gas reduction as the maximization goal, you see the uh, provided that the profitability does not go negative, so we can sacrifice the profitability to zero, but maximizing greenhouse gas reduction. You see uh, the radius for aggregation grows. You see a new system pops up here. That system is uh, the lowest frequency. It, it shows up the least number of times and it's highly dependent on the surrounding farms. In the same way, we look at the second study area and we see the clusters when we um, target profitability maximization uh, and then when we target the greenhouse gas reduction. So some of the takeaways from this, uh, uh, these figures and of this study, we find that the profitability of digesters uh, using dairy manure exclusively for electricity sale is not there yet. It's, uh, it's tenuous economically. The profitability of cooperative digesters are driven by herd sizes locally and the spatial distribution, of course. Of course. And we also find that the, both individual and cooperative digesters are always anchored, uh, or the hubs are on the largest herds. And we found that the cooperative digesters, uh, in the case where they are built, they, have the, they show the highest net present, present value per cow in, in any of the options that are available in that frequency. Our goal going forward is to incorporate other uh, food waste stream uh, and to allow for other ways of utilizing uh, the biogas. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge the funding sources and uh, other consultants we used their expertise.